Mr. Speaker, say, um, I want to thank the Honourable Member for asking the question. Uh, yes, in December 2021, the Australian Government, through DFET, launched a CAWA pilot uh, program. Uh, prior to that, you know, uh, CAWA was not allowed to be um, uh, exported to Australia. Um, uh, so, um, so they allowed a pilot program uh, for export of commercial CAWA consignments into Australia. And uh, several of our local exporters took advantage uh, of the opportunity. Um, it has been five months now since the opening of this pathway. Earlier in May this year, PGS already exported around a total of 30.4 metric tons of carbon to Australia, earning around $3.4 million. So considering the short duration, uh, we note that you know, this is a substantial um, you know, uh, gain that we have made. Uh, there are a total of uh, 146 exporters Fiji is not the only country, there are other countries where exporting kava, a total of 146 uh, exporters. Out of these 146, 94 exporters are from Fiji. So we are uh, uh, basically uh, exporting uh, most of the, uh, the requirement of the market. And um, there are pretty stringent requirements uh, uh, in terms of uh, label, what needs to go into the label, the importer details, the lot codes, the country of origin statements and uh, required warning statements. And uh, so uh, these are the stringent requirements that uh, kind of hampered uh, uh, uplift of or entry of exporters to export to Australia. Uh, they have, uh, this year they've also uh, allowed um, other variant of kava, let's say kava root chips, kava root powder, whole kava root as well to be exported to Australia. So, uh, despite the challenges of labeling, uh, we have got good uptake that we have made in the first five months. Uh, our exporters have been learning along the way and making sure that all requirements are met and there's very limited obstacles to exploring this new cover market and a massive market. Uh, there's a large population uh, in Australia who are from the Pacific, particularly from Fiji, who are consuming kava as the kava lovers. And we want to ensure that we take, if not all, a chunk of that market, you know, and for that, we need to get ready on the ground level. Um, it's not that, you know, we can do this in a month or three months or a year. Kava is a long-term crop. So, um, unfortunately, members on the other side don't understand this. You know, they want to do an impact analysis for fencing material in two weeks' time. Are we giving the fencing material now? These are capital investment. Their impact will, in the livestock sector, will come 15 years later, 20 years later. You know, irrigation, you can't have an impact analysis on the irrigation material they're giving now. So Mr. Speaker said, we are quite impressed with the uptake and the compliance level is about 81%. And we had so far no biosecurity issues. So we want to thank our exporters for showing interest. We want to capture this market. If not, if we don't do that, Vanuatu will come in. So I think we're doing extremely well on this. And I want to um, thank the Honorable Prime Minister for establishing this uh, Vovale partnership, which is this opening of the kava market is a response uh, of this uh, partnership, the Buwala partnership that was established between the two prime ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I thank the Honourable Minister. We will move on.